Hi guys, I want to talk a little bit about a virus. Now, this is a book and you can see it's well traveled. Um, I bought a long time ago because I bumped into Dr. Um, D Daryl Ray. Uh, when I was trying to publish my book, he was doing the same for his. And so we were comparing notes and he then went the self-publishing route, got his book published. I went the Amazon way, which it was okay. It was just that when I was started indexing, I found that a lot of things I had to change my mind about, and this is why I didn't I didn't publish it. But um, Daryl got it published, and and this God virus is now what is what is driving me to think a little bit about what is happening at the moment, and this is why I thought, okay, if I look at these chapters, if I look at the contents of this book. I can relate everything here to Islam. And this is why I thought, let me do that. Let me, let me take a look. What happens in a Muslim who is affected, who is infected by the Islam virus? Now, a virus is an infectious agent. And that's it. This agent is a life form which replicates inside a living organism because it needs a host. It, it cannot replicate itself. So the entire aim is to replicate by implanting the own, the specific information into the host, overwriting the host information. And the Islam virus follows the usual sort of like this one, two, three pattern. First, the adsorption, attaching to the host, make contact, identifying. And the second step is the actual transfer of the false information or in, in the case of a real virus in, as in the form of RNA. And then the reprogramming as a final and third step, which either takes place in the nucleus or it takes place in the brain. And then, I don't know if this is a fourth step, but then the, the way that it works is then to deliver this to others. To the, the, the virus then goes and spreads itself to infect more cells. And the same happens in the Islam virus. Because it sends out the same identical information then to others where they have real dawah courses teaching people how to infect others. And then the Islam virus makes sure people receive positive feedback and constant confirmation. And this hides the real effect of the virus, where the victim has a lot of symptoms but doesn't even realize it. The victim actually thinks that they are being rational, that they are reasonable, that they are logical. But in, in reality, they're accepting information from other Islam virus victims without a fact check. They're taking only other Islam virus victims as in-group social contacts. And they will try and stay away from atheists or those without a God belief. They will limit the rational thinking capabilities, even though they are not aware of it. They have a restricted perception of reality, a limited or non-functional critical thinking capability, a false sense of an emotional high, this false superiority complex. And then on the other hand, you have the paranoia that others are out to get them. <laughs> then the increased ability to accept conspiracy theories. I don't know why this is. And then what they do is they generate the shield to reject all factual criticism, especially if it comes from somebody without a God belief. Now, logical thinking is all but shut down. And you, this is something that I've, I've observed a number of times. They develop an in-group jargon, replacing everyday expressions with a, with a different language, where suddenly they're using Arabic for this. And then this adhering to a strict schedule of contact points with the Islam virus dogma to keep the victim busy, i.e. this is dogma that the Islam virus downloads. Like for example, you need to pray five times a day. It's to keep you busy and to keep you attached to the dogma of the Islam virus. There's a lot of things that, that happen constantly, the whole selection of your the in-group of, of your social contacts. This is all to keep you, um, you know, inside this group and, and in this sort of zone so that you don't 
stray from this. And then discouraging any analysis or questioning of rules, rituals or commands injected by the Islam virus. I mean, we all know that. Don't ask questions if you feel that they could cause you doubt. And then the substituting common sense with naive credulity. You will just accept it. What do you mean you can slap a corpse with a piece of steak and it will come to life? Well, then it must have been a miracle. Because anything that Allah wants, Allah can do. So this is, this is naive. This is totally gullible. And you cannot get behind this. Because at the same time, it's activating a fierce, irrational defense mode. Ranging from logical fallacies over personal insults all the way to inventing new words like Islamophobia, a useless word, I can't even remember who invented it, to protect the effects of the Islam virus. And then, most importantly, I think, a false sense of pride for infecting others with the Islam virus. This is seen as a virtue to go and tell others how wonderful this is, even if this is just a lie. But to what end? Why, why was this Islam virus actually created with only one single result in mind to generate obedient servants? And now if you look at the history, they had to be prepared to fight and even die for an unscrupulous leader or a caliph. Is there any other possibility? Because all you're getting is an imaginary reward which is due only after the obedient servant or soldier had died. There are no checks, no balances, thanks to, and I must admit, a quite well-designed Islam virus. But on the other hand, is there a vaccine? Is there a cure? Is there an antidote? Yeah, oh, oh absolutely. It's called reality. That's all it takes, reality. A high dose of reality will crack open the outside of the bubble. Remember, the, the, the virus consists of different, I mean, it's just the RNA inside, then you just have a, have a couple of lipids, proteins, and that's it. So these little pieces that stick out, they need to attach to a cell. So if you block these little things that are sticking out, or if you block the receptors on the cell that they cannot then dock onto, it doesn't work anymore. Or you can attack the, um, the outside, the skin itself, the, the one that's not the skin, the, the outside membrane. And this is very easily done. So that's it. That kills the virus. So all we need to, to now to go back to the Islam virus, how we do this is just address the bad ideas distributed by the Islam virus. Now, if we address the bad ideas, we do all three things at the same time we block the ability for a recipient to fall victim. We take the distributor out of the picture because he himself or she herself will see that there is something wrong here. And at the same time, we are destroying the virus from the outside. Then all we need to do after we have, um, you know, exposed the bad ideas as such, we have to point this out, what the Islam virus is propagating, and this should lead to the emergence of points of attachment where reality then, in turn, can replace the fake information. So we need to just point out and expose the defective information, the distribution mechanism, which is a badly written, highly flawed book. This is at the center of the whole thing show that this, this this distribution mechanism, this badly written book, is really not of divine origins. That's the end of it. If we are able to consistently provide this in a calm, substantiated, fact-based manner, this will break open the defensive shell and allow facts and reality to take over, leading to the successful vaccination and ensuing immunity of the Islam virus victim. And this leaves behind a more healthy brain, not governed by the principles and immoral ideas of political Islam and ideology based on the society and culture of 7th century Arabia. But we need to remember two things. 
We can only point to the door, maybe even open it a bit, but the victim must want to walk through it by themselves, all on their own. And number two, there's no reward. There's no better kind of prison. There's just liberation from lies and deceit. And then, of course, the important factor, truth, reality, facts. But if a person doesn't want this, it's a tough time. Anyway, we need to hope that even if somebody accepts it and then turns their back on the set of lies, they don't meet the fate intended for those who get vaccinated. Murder by the very people this now liberated person was a part of.